Arthur C. Clarke's epitaph, which I think is fabulous. Maybe I'd like to have that on my gravestone if I ever have a gravestone, that is. He never grew up, but he never stopped growing. This was a line he often quoted, a strong tether on imagination, as imagination is usually murdered by adulthood. And yet to grow that ability to be, to be nurtured and become more. And this, um, okay, and this is a time to imagine, reimagine, I think, because the great cities as we know them have failed. New York City, no longer do I think of it as a great achievement of mankind as I did when I lived there as an architecture student. Recently, looking at its iconic skyline, I suddenly saw a great and greedy, unsustainable monster. Look upon New Delhi, uh, Beijing, not great cities, but perhaps seasonal necropolises, growing death with every breath. Um, no longer do I think of these as fabulous stars in the journey of mankind. No, I think they're selfish monuments designed along the paths of uh, least resistance um, that consume unfair quantities of air, water, food, and energy, and yet have no mandate to return anything to the earth but their feces. I'm, I'm done with dystopia. Let's, let's look at what is happening today in the world. Um, these are some of the um, headlines, of, uh, some of the lines taken from various uh, media sources, um, and this is happening mostly in the West, which has been considered sort of the developed uh, world for the past so many centuries. And, uh, but at, at the same time, let, let us look uh, at the other side of the world. This is happening in China, uh, where um, China is talking of um, of urbanizing the rural populations. So there are two ways of thinking as China also advances as a super. But anyway, let, let me just uh, go on to my little vision, which is um, to begin with a childlike imagination, utopian of course. Uh, I think um, a fiefdom, a little acreage that is self-sufficient Self-sufficient in essentials, as I said, food, water, air, and energy. To achieve that, I would need forest cover to protect my water source and clean my air and nourish my soil. A forest farm, nothing to invent or devise as it's an ancient Sri Lankan multi-crop technique identified as the Kandyan home garden system. And I will take energy from the sun. Let's call it solar energy. I will rule my fiefdom a microsystem, tiny but healthy. Um, my fiefdom will be independent. Yes and no. Independent like a species, but in fact there will be a series of fiefdoms, almost pastoral villages, a collective of microsystems that compromise a larger ecosystem. An ecosystem um, like a, a living, thriving organism, people by a self-sufficient herd, a community, Let's call them a tribe, a, the sufficient tribe. Like-minded people with commonalities, followers of a cult. The sufficient tribe who returns to the land to produce food, water, and air that they can trust for their children. They will lean on each other with their skills and lack of them to supplement the farmers will be bakers, tailors, and carpenters. But their products will be called smart new names like artisanal bread, custom design fashion, bespoke furniture, and there will be manage, management consultants, will guide innovators and startups, but they will be called lifestyle gurus, or they may be Sri Ganesha's anomalies. Uh, <laughs> so, um, the community will trade whatever they cannot produce. It may be called Bitcoin. Maybe we are starting to value what was once the norm, artisanal products and custom design solutions. Maybe the misfits of the old cities migrate and become members of, com of communities that was rarely possible in the cities. So we reclaim some old values and shape a new norm. Green living will be a baseline at not, and not need explaining, and Trump will be dead. 
in the new in the new non cities will be what uh, what we lost in the cities and what we gained maybe these new landscapes will be the invisible cities italo calvino wrote of arriving at each sit new city the traveler finds again a past of his that he did not know he had the foreignness of what you no longer are or no longer possess lies in wait for you in foreign unpossessed places did i just dismantle your city or did i just paint a picture that doesn't sound like anything new um there won't be enough land for us all to live horizontally and some of you will choose to live vertically and be equally or partially self sufficient for those who don't want to dig, dig up their potatoes or something you know they can live vertically and uh, so on or we will trade even barter between villages sort of like carbon trading yes and if you live in the old cities that would by then be only vertical you may trade your technological skills your accounting and administrative skills for clean air trustworthy water water and food with individual contracts not vast and greedy multinational trade agreements and you may trade your vertical life for my horizontal life take a vacation trade with another an individual contract like airbnb bnb home exchange or couch surfing your lifestyle guru will tell you what to do um how will you get there um on an electric air route that you subscribe to as you go gliding clean silence your vacation or trade your skills for goods the roads of the old city those great swaths of distressed concrete surface have now long disappeared um so the concrete surfaces have now disappeared beneath orchards and medicinal forests the food highways of the of the new landscape a collective of villages invisible cities that took back the essentials of the past and eliminated the noxious and destructive and all else that is unsustainable with the clean new technology to become a sustainable empire and as i conclude i feel like clark's alvin of diaspar searching for the long lost people of the empire are you here where is the empire thank you